We find the China-U.S. relationship today weighed down by a growing number of disputes, including commercial espionage and intellectual property theft from American companies, unequal treatment of our diplomats, businesses, NGOs, and journalists by Chinese authorities, and abuse of the United States' academic freedom and welcoming posture towards international students to steal sensitive technology and research from our universities in order to advance the PRC's military capabilities. It is these factors which has led the President to direct a number of actions in response, including yesterday's notification to the PRC that we have withdrawn our consent for the PRC to operate its consulate in Houston, Texas. There's also growing alarm around the world about the dismantling of Hong Kong's autonomy, liberty, and democratic institutions, the arbitrary mass detentions and other human rights abuses in Xinjiang, efforts to eliminate Tibetan identity, military pressure against Taiwan, and the assertion of unfounded maritime claims in the South China Sea. Other areas of concern include China's increasingly assertive use of military and economic coercion and state-sponsored disinformation campaigns, including, among others, against India, Australia, Canada, the UK ASEAN members, the European Union, and several other European countries. As part of a comprehensive approach, we are engaged with allies and partners in the G7, the G20, and NATO to highlight the threat that the PRC poses not just to the United States' interests, but also the interests of our allies and partners. We are broadening partnerships across the transatlantic community, the Indo-Pacific, the Middle East, Africa, and the Western Hemisphere. Let me be clear. The United States supports the aspirations of those Chinese people who seek to live in peace, prosperity, and freedom. Secretary Pompeo has met with pro-democracy leaders from Hong Kong, with Chinese dissidents and survivors of repression in Xinjiang, and last month I was honored to present the International Women of Courage Award to the mothers of Tiananmen. The bravery of many Chinese people who seek to advance human rights and universal freedoms inspires us all in our work. Mr. Chairman, we are urgently taking the necessary steps to defend the interests of the United States. As we seek to correct the imbalance in our relations with China, we must address today's realities while at the same time leaving open tomorrow's possibilities. With our friends and allies, we are standing up for universal rights and the rules-based international system. The system that has provided the world's collective peace, security, and prosperity for generations to the benefit of the United States, the People's Republic of China, and the entire world. Thank you.